reaching CSWE, the highest level of SOLIDWORKS certification, isn't something that happens overnight. In this video, I'll share my journey to becoming a certified SOLIDWORKS expert, the challenges I faced along the way, and what you can learn from my experience. Hi, welcome to Fully Defined. My name's Chris. Let's jump in. So what is the CSWE? For anyone not familiar, SOLIDWORKS certifications are organized in a hierarchy. You start with the CSWA, that's the associate level, really just the basics. It's designed for users new to the software and who have completed a beginner course. This associate level certification proves your fundamental knowledge and basic skills in the software and is suitable for those starting their career or transitioning into a new domain. Then comes the CSWP, the professional level. The professional certification is designed for users who have mastered the fundamentals and possess a solid foundation. This professional level certification is designed for individuals who actively use the software in a work environment or on a full-time basis for at least six months. From there, you branch into advanced professional modules. There's surfacing, sheet metal, weldments, drawings, and mold tools. Then the highest on the ladder is the CSWE, a certified SOLIDWORKS expert. What it tests isn't just whether you know the software, it's whether you can solve complex design problems under pressure. Unlike the associate and professional certifications, expert level has the prerequisite that you have completed four of those advanced modules. And given it's the most challenging exam on offer, there is no sample exam to practice on either. The CSWE level is rare. Only a tiny percentage of SOLIDWORKS users ever get there. Just 0.11%. As of mid-2025, there are currently just over 8,000 CSWEs worldwide. Only 3% of the certified professionals progress to become certified experts. The exclusivity was one of the reasons I took up the challenge on my own accord back in 2013. To tell you about my journey, let me take you back to my starting point. My journey didn't start with certifications. I began teaching SOLIDWORKS at RMIT University in 2008 that was the year after I graduated from there with a degree in industrial design. At that stage, I was teaching purely from hands-on experience. I learned by doing, not by passing exams. I was the type of student who would finish my work and then help others in the classes with me. So becoming a teacher was I mean, kind of natural. As time went on, I realized two things. One, certifications would give me more credibility as an educator, and two, they would push me into areas of the software that I didn't use day to day. That was the gap that I wanted to close. So I spent a number of years teaching part-time and starting work in junior design roles. My first certification was five years later in 2012, and I started with the CSWP, the Certified SOLIDWORKS Professional Exam. I was curious to see how my self-taught experience would fare when put up against a structured testing system. And from the results, I went pretty well. I was by no means perfect, but I comfortably answered all the questions with plenty of time to spare and achieved enough points to pass on my first attempt. In the following 12 months, I tackled some more of the advanced modules, sheet metal, mold tools, and surfacing. Each one forced me to practice workflows I didn't always rely on or didn't use in my day-to-day -day job. The modules weren't just about memorizing tools, it was about solving design problems quickly and accurately. The surfacing exam was by far the most complicated. There were terminology and surfacing tools that I'd never come across before. Thankfully, the exams are open book, so I was able to research and learn during the exam itself. I managed to pass each module on my first attempt and then scraped by on my first attempt at the CSWE exam in 2013. Let me tell you what I learned along the way. What really struck me was how the certifications changed the way I approached design. Early on, I thought it was about knowing every feature and button in the software, but the CSWE pushed me beyond that. It's not about the tool you use, it's about choosing the most efficient path to the solution. As a designer, often it's about choosing a path that will allow easy modifications during the design process. That means setting up sketches and features to drive changes throughout the entire model, configurations to manage part variants without duplicating files, and surfaces and solid working together to solve geometry problems. In short, the CSWE tested not just what I knew, but how I thought and prompted me to evolve my processes. So some advice for others starting on the certification journey. If you're thinking about starting down this path, here's my advice. First, don't skip the fundamentals. Build a strong base with the CSWA and or CSWP. Second, 
practice with real projects. Don't just follow the tutorials. Take on something messy where you'll need to troubleshoot and problem solve. Third, make use of the practice exams. They're the closest thing to the real pressure of the test. Use the practice exams available and seek out learning resources for the areas that you struggle with. And finally, don't rush. There is generally no urgency here except for your own goals. Each level prepares you for the next. If you try to shortcut the process, you'll only make it harder. So a note about teaching and certifications. By the time I achieved my CSWE in 2013, I'd already been teaching SOLIDWORKS at RIT for five years. The certifications didn't make me a teacher, but they gave me a new layer of confidence and credibility. When students asked, have you done the exam yourself? I could say yes, and I could share not just theory, but exam tested strategies. In a way, the teaching and the certifications reinforced each other. The more I learned, the more I could pass on. And that in itself is one of the beauties of teaching. So that's my journey to becoming a certified SOLIDWORKS expert. It wasn't quick, it wasn't easy, but it was absolutely worth it and actually a bit of fun. It's why now I still seek out tests and challenges to keep my skills current. The biggest lesson, it's not about ticking a box. It's about building the problem-solving mindset that makes you a better designer. If you're on this path yourself, keep going. Each step builds momentum, and before long, you'll look back and realize just how far you've come. If this story was useful or interesting for you, hit like and subscribe for more SOLIDWORKS tips. Let me know in the comments where you are in your certification journey. And if you're keen to hear more about my teaching experience, check out this video on my lessons learned from a decade of teaching SOLIDWORKS.